Well, it was, a, it was incredible to watch the music business just have no idea how to deal with this. Yeah. You know, now this is very interesting because we were struck when we met, when we were shopping the label and we met with all the presidents of the big major companies and we met with everybody. Um, they were all white dudes, uh-huh. you know, every one of them. Uh-huh. And um, these people did not know how to get their own email. Their assistants would print out their emails for them every day and then they would dictate their responses to their assistants. Uh-huh. So how were they possibly supposed to understand the ramifications of an internet uh-huh. and an internet that was giving away music for free? They had no idea. They had no idea how to deal with it. <clears throat> so, and we sort of watched in horror as the, the you know, the mainstream, because the, the mainstream, the major labels had an opportunity to lead the way on this. And there was a moment where you could really harness this thing uh-huh. and use it for, a way of getting your music to your consumers in a, in a real life <laughs> commerce way where they pay for it. Um, and they just, they just didn't know, they just dropped the ball. So then the iTunes download store is going away early next year. That'll be the end of that era. Yep. And for a long time, we made good money on the iTunes store. Mm-hmm. What we made on a download compared to what we make on a stream is mm-hmm. just ridiculous. And then streaming came along. Just take Universal as an example. So Universal owns the Bob Marley catalog, which streams hundreds of millions of times a month. And they have Taylor Swift, whose who's tracks, you know, she's, she's got tracks that have streamed a billion times. Uh-huh. So, and all the major labels own a share of Spotify. That's how they allowed Spotify to exist. So they're loving it. It's a, it's a model that works great for them. Three years ago, the, mu- the record business showed a profit for the first time in like five years before that. Mm-hmm. And it was all due to streaming. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, the predictions for growth in the, in the business were rosy again. And it had been a very long time mm-hmm. um, since that had happened. Mm-hmm. Things get put in boxes, and that can be a very detrimental thing. Um, you know, because somebody thinks, well, I don't like world music. You know, but if you say, oh, this is this cool record where this Algerian DJ is mixing Indian music with like grooves and dance music, they might go, oh yeah, let me check that out. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love this, mm-hmm. you know? So uh, trying to stay out of boxes, we, we do a lot of singer-songwriter stuff. That's been a love of mine that's stayed from the early days, of, you know, when I started that label at Wyndham Hill. Um, we've moved much more into just straight up ambient electronic music because that's also a passion of mine, and I think it's a golden era for that kind of music. I think it's just amazing stuff coming out that's in that intersection of classical music, ambient music, dance music, people like Nils Fromm and um, you know, Max Richter. And, you know, these are people selling out. I saw, do you guys know who Nils Fromm is at all? He's a German producer, and I mean, he, last time he was here, he sold out the Warfield. Just him, just him and a pile of keyboards. Uh-huh. Um, and you know, just incredible. So those of you that are artists and have a social media thing, I would really encourage that feeling of connectiveness with your fans, that is what you're striving for. So what I need is an artist who buys into that, who understands that, who's good at that, and if they're not good at that, they're willing to learn how to be good at that. Because I can't do that on my own. And I need artists that are willing to work, and work their butts off, you know? It's like, if you're gonna go on tour, and we're gonna help you go on tour, then every market you're in, I'm gonna try and get you in for a radio interview. I'm gonna, you know, we have the Guardian here, that's our free weekly. Every market's got an equivalent to the Guardian. You know, the Village Voice in New York, whatever it is in in Portland. Um, You're gonna wanna get previews for that show. You're gonna wanna get interviews. You're gonna wanna, you know, and the artist needs to participate in all that. Hey, after you do that show, and you're done and you're exhausted and all you want to do is go back and have a beer or whatever else you, you, know, you do after the show, I actually need you to do six interviews. And I, if there's an artist that's not willing to do that, I don't want to work with them because it's not going to work. It's not going to be successful. It's like, we'll do our part, but it, the world and the landscape of the business, business now is that if the artist doesn't do their part, it's just not going to work, at least in, the, in the, the way we do. If you're an aspiring music producer and ready to evolve your sound, find out more about our San Francisco ground campus, online classes, and one-on-one mentorships at pyramind.com.